So we have a bunch of chemistry in plants, which by the nature of the way biochemistry works, gets reduced to separate constituents. And um, some of these individual constituents are going to have unique properties. Um, some of them may be toxic, some of them may not be toxic. Um, so let me just give you a couple of examples where there's some good science about a constituent which leads to conclusions about how the herb should be used which are totally wrong, totally wrong conclusions because the science is taken out of context. So two examples. One involves this book, Medications and Mother's Milk, which is the standard textbook and a brilliant, very useful textbook for looking at the way in which prescription drugs um, get metabolized in the mother's body and whether they get through in breast milk. Very, very important issue. Um, now, in this book, he talks briefly, because there's no science to back this up, briefly about the use of fennel seed um, as a galactagogue. A galactagogue is a substance which promotes healthy lactation. It doesn't cause lactation. Um, it won't kick lactation into overdrive, but if there is some, um, some non-psychological problem keeping the amount of milk produced low, galactagogues can get it up to the right level. Very, very useful things. All cultures have them. Fennel seed um, is one of the traditional European ones. There are much better ones, but it's, it's widely used. Now, when you look at the oil in, in fennel seeds, the, um, the volatile oil, the essential oil, those terms mean the same thing. Um, and if you analyze that oil, there's something like 25 to 35 different components in it. And one of the things about volatile plants is that genetically they're all perfumiers. They, they blend oils to make totally unique um, aromas. The difference between yarrow oil and chamomile oil on paper is minimal. Absolutely minimal, but totally different aromas. It's amazing stuff. So within um, fennel oil and some other Apiaceae oils, you find a constituent called methyl eugenol, um, and then another constituent, constituent called estragol. And if you test those on rats, or is it mice? Sorry, mice, not rats. Um, they cause um, initially liver inflammation, different forms of hepatitis, and eventually liver cancer. That then leads the scientists and the regulators to say because you've got this dangerous constituent the seed should not be used at all in um, in infants and really nobody should be using fennel seed because you've got this toxic oil that totally flies in the face of all our historical use of fennel um, fennel is non-toxic Fennel seed is non-toxic to humans. Now let me point out where they go wrong. Firstly, methyl eugenol and estragol, yes, they're probably dangerous to the liver. What they're ignoring is all the other constituents which moderate the toxicity. Um, they don't look at whole, whole, um, whole oil studies. It's component oil studies. Secondly, in galactagogue teas and other things, nobody takes the oil, you use the seed. So you're making an infusion of the seed, you're not pouring the oil in water. So then you've got a secondary um, moderating, moderation of, of the, the toxicity. And thirdly, it's a bit more, third opens up into a bunch of other things. They did the tests on mice. Mice and other rodents don't eat Apiaceae seeds. There's, there's no evolutionary connection between them. Mammals do. So our livers have had evolutionary time to adjust to fennel seed oil constituents, which, which might be liver toxic, but there's not a drop of evidence in the historical record or the modern clinical record of fennel in any way causing 
toxicity in any body or any child. However, that little bit of active constituent information out of context leads the standard book to say don't use it, which turns out to be very confusing to lactation consultants who use this book almost as a Bible, which, which it is for drugs. 